So hello everybody, uh, so I've gotten some decent feedback on this thing, and for example, one person said, hey, instead of skipping all the battles, why don't you just show us like one or two monster groups from each area, so that way we know what you're fighting. And that is a pretty good idea, so I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys what I fought from the last game, and at the end of every episode from now on, I'll show you guys what I skipped. So, last time we ran into a bunch of icky bugs, like these caterpillars, and then also these stingy wasp things. Then I went outside and I fought like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, who is now blue. And of course in that mountain you guys saw there were these ponies that were immune to gas. And then there were some pretty red birds, and they were not immune to gas. Uh, there were also these woolly mammoths, and they were pretty tough, but also easily confused. And finally, there were these things called trilliums, which are like plants, and they're poisonous, but not immune to poison gas. Oh, also it turns out the guy who made this ROM hack is totally watching my Let's Plays, which is pretty cool. Uh, although he did comment that he wanted to change some things, you know, because of all my, all my, uh, you know... But no! You made your sandwich and you will sleep in it! The important thing is really just that you made something and that you're proud of it, and you put it out there. And honestly, I'm having a pretty good time. You know, flaws can be really endearing. One thing that always bugs me anymore is they release games these days with the idea that they can be incomplete. You know, they'll just release patches and fix them later. But that creates a lot of malcontent. I mean, for one thing, everyone can kind of tell that the game's not really complete, and then you can never really get everything fixed in there. StarCraft 2 is probably a really good example. They released that game with the whole Zerg race being just obviously not very well fleshed out, but then everyone just got used to it being that way, and they couldn't make a lot of sweeping changes, because then everyone would get mad! And now they're really just stuck with all their gameplay being kind of how it is. I mean, everything's just gonna get real stale, because they had a really rigid game design, and the balance is sort of flaky, and... Well, you know, it's just how things are. Nothing's ever perfect, and everything you do will get criticized by someone. So really, the best thing to do is just to say, these are the objectives I want to meet, and then do your best to meet those. You'll do good. I mean, stuff always comes out wrong the first time, and the second time, and the hundredth time. But even if you reach out to only like a couple hundred people with your stuff, you have to remember that that's probably more names than you could realistically remember. Mass media can make us feel compelled to want to reach out and satisfy everybody, but it's just not possible. All you can really do is just set some realistic goals and be happy with what you get. And, you know, people like to ask me, how did I get so many views? And, well, the real answer is, is that a lot of times I was just in the right place at the right time, and I was lucky, but probably more than anything, I just kept doing it. The first thing always has a lot of mistakes, but someone looks at it and they say, you know, there's potential, I'll look at the next thing. And then they check that out, and it is a little bit better. And then the next one after that is better, too. And pretty soon, you've got a lot of viewers. And then YouTube takes all your videos away. I am afraid there's no pinnacle, ladies and gentlemen, you just keep going. So... That's probably enough about that. Hey, let's play video games! So here we are at last, at the Returner's Hideout. Lunar Republic Hideout. Princess Celestia, this way please! So, you guys live in a damp cave. Stocked it with the uh, tables and nice chairs and decorative pottery and, and decorative armor. It's, it's good we're using our resources for things we really need. Yeah, well, I'm sure the democratically elected mayor of the rebellion knows what she's doing. Madam Mayor, so good to see you. She's the one who can talk to Espers? Espers? The Empire enslaved her with the crown. Wait, no one has mentioned anything about Espers since the beginning of the game. Our spies reported she killed 50 soldiers in only 3 minutes. But I couldn't! Twy, Mayor, show some discretion. She's coming to terms with all of this. We don't have time to argue. You need to understand what our situation is here. Your leader sucks. That's the situation. There are only a few of us trying to fight the Empire, and, and we're fighting a war, we need a lot of things. Money, supplies, power's power, intelligence, decorative pottery, decorative armor, but there's one thing missing. Good leadership. Oh, no magic. We won't stand a chance without magic. And you are the key to unlocking it. Uh, actually, no, I've got this stone. Mayor, stop it at once. You're being really mean, and nobody likes you. I'm exhausted, let me rest for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, you just pretend that we made you exhausted, and that's why that dialogue didn't work. We were uncooperative. Who elected her rebellion mayor anyway? I've been all over these parts, and I can tell you the occupied cities are in a bad state. The Republic is the only group that could change how bad things are, that's why I joined. But I don't have any friends. That's not true at all. Celestia wouldn't let you out of her sight, and don't forget I promised I'd protect you. Did, did Twilight not consider them her friends, or was she just feeling really insecure and wanted to hear Apple Bloom say it? Either way, probably not a very good choice on Twilight's part. You should probably never really tell your friends, I think I have no friends, because that would be why you don't have any friends. Um, oh well. Thou mayest trust our sister completely. She's always been honest, if only a little strange. 
But do not let her curiosity get the better of you! Yes, that was very clever, Luna. Thank you. I think I'd like to take a nap in the common room. I, I couldn't get any rest in my private bedroom, you know, with, with, you know, Apple Bloom standing there all night. I kept worrying she was gonna touch my butt and call me Scootaloo. Tell me if she comes in, okay? Just wake me up, it'll be alright. Seriously, man, everyone in this entire group just creeps me right the heck out. That Luna's always shouting, and, and Celestia's always got these just weird, empty platitudes, you know? She's like a robot, only a princess. And, and, and Apple Bloom is just... She's, she's so determined to... I don't even know what she's determined to do. It, it just freaks me out, okay? She keeps talking about protecting me, but apparently that means following her around everywhere she goes. You have much to learn, Twilight. Just remember the most powerful magic of all is the magic of friendship. Is there anyone in the Empire you could call a friend? What? Is that a dig on me or a dig on the Empire? Uh, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Is, is everyone, like, just completely self-centered? I have amnesia, remember? I, I could have a husband in the Empire and I just can't remember him? And you guys are trying to get me to join this group, which is gonna burn the Empire to the ground! Mayor? She went outside a moment ago. Oh good, because I have a lot to tell her about how she's not really any better than what she's trying to stop. Have you made a decision? Will you be the key to this war? Okay, freeze. Uh, how do I want to describe this situation? Mm, this is stupid! Oh, well, that's a little harsh, but thank you, Lubu. Okay, so here's the thing. When most people think about warfare, they're thinking about the guy on the front lines. You know, he's going out there and he's killing all the other soldiers. I mean, rah, you know, you, you just kill everyone. It's really romantic. I mean, not like a lovey-dovey sort of way, but, you, you know, you, you get what I mean. You can hear that sweet electric guitar playing in the background, you know, -la -la -la, and everyone is just being killed by this one dude. He's the key to the battle. It's too cool! I mean, you don't want to not think about it. Like, what else could you possibly need besides one of these guys on the front lines? Oh, yeah. Even if we have a bunch of that, I guess we still gotta think of a way to get it to the front lines too, huh? And I guess when it gets there, we gotta dispense it out to everyone somehow. And then whoever gives that food out, well, we've gotta pay them. And, I mean, how are we gonna pay them? Well, we can't just have, like, a box. You know, everyone takes a little bit of money from the box on the honor system. That's not gonna work. Oh, I guess we gotta hire someone to be in charge of payroll and... Oh, what if they embezzle? Oh, we gotta make sure that no one's embezzling any money. Oh, oh, and what if when we take over the city, we've gotta rebuild all the walls? Oh, someone's gonna have to rebuild the walls. Does anyone know how to rebuild walls? Uh, wait, wait, we're gonna have how many soldiers? How are we gonna keep track? Roll call? I am beginning to think that, that maybe one person in the front screaming at the other guys is maybe not enough to be the key to victory. No, I will not be the key. You guys are, are wacky ponies living in the mountains. You don't have a plan, or any formal military experience, or any hope of survival. And, I mean, yes, I am capable of learning magic, but you have to remember that the Empire is training thousands of Twilights right now as we speak. Uh, let's see what you guys even have for supplies. We've got air lancets, and whatever that is, antidote, sarsaparilla. I'm just gonna keep these, I hope you realize, you know, I'm not helping you out, but... But, uh, you don't. you guys are just gonna lose them anyway. Besides, you know what's really important to think about? Even if you guys actually seized all this from the Empire, like you are 100% subsisting off of them by successfully robbing them blind, they have factories. So every time you steal a little dagger from them, they just produce another one. Uh, let's see, we, we got this magnet hoof that we got from them. Uh, oh, that's right, I did not buy any good equipment. Well, I don't need it, I have fire magic. But magic is really expensive in this ROM hack for some reason, like I keep running out of it. And that's really just another thing, though. Twilight gets tired after, like, four or five spells, and she has to go take a break. I, I guess I just don't really understand this kind of mentality. I mean, like, Twilight drops out of the sky, and she's just a confused crack soldier. Like, an elite soldier, but that's all she is. She can break the front lines, that's about it. And how do we know she's not gonna stab him in the back when she regains her memories? I mean, she might have a husband. But I'm nothing special, am I? That's exactly what I'm saying! It, but that's not a fault of the soldier. I mean, everyone is mortal. It's more a fault of this this crappy organization and their bad leadership. What's going on? What happened? For the last time, Mayor Mayor, I am not gonna be joining your stupid organization. It's got questionable motives. I don't care how slowly your guys zombie walk into the room and then lay down and take a nap. Someone did a number on him. K k k canerlot Empire took canerlot coming this way. Oh God, they found us. I don't know how, but they found us. Apple Bloom. I know. Some pony has to sneak into Canterlot City and slow the Empire down, right? The fate of Canterlot is in your hooves, good luck. Twy, you'll have to trust Celestia in the meantime, but please, don't let her talk you into anything weird. Apple Bloom! Weird stuff is all you guys talk me into. Haha, <laughs> sister, do they still call us the Molestia- Luna! Oh, she, she dropped her caps lock. What are we gonna do? Celestia, we'll, we'll escape down the Leet River and make our way to Naish. I want to see that Esper for myself. 
Right, there's a raft by the back entrance. It's a gamble, but let's go. You can't hide here anymore, come with us. I think you should see that Esper again. No, just take me back to the Empire. We've no time to dilly-dally, let's make for Nash. <laughs> I have no confidence in you guys. For one thing, you know, Celestia reminds me of exactly what I think of whenever I picture a, a corporate board leader. Here we go, this raft will take us to Na Naish. Uh, hop aboard the raft, yes, go. Head towards Naish, but protect the mayor at all costs. If the mayor has put out a commission, the journey is over. That seems unnecessarily harsh. What is the mayor even doing for us? Yeah. But anyway though, so Celestia, corporate board leader, yeah. It seems like she's really successful, but for not any particular reason. I don't know what it is, but it, it, maybe it's just all the platitudes, like I mentioned before. And, and if you're not familiar with the word, a platitude is like a really just kind of trite statement, but it's said as if it's profound. You know, especially by people in high power. It just gives this sort of vibe, like, Celestia has gotten to where she was by being born into this, or by being rich and advanced, and she didn't really, like, claw her way up or do anything to achieve her power. Oh, here, I think I'll go ahead and save. Someone warned me that this game has really tough bosses later on, and I don't want to get killed by, you know, anything upcoming. Uh, but anyway, though, when someone utters a lot of platitudes... Oh, hang on a minute. Is the mayor blue? Yes. Why is she blue in the save menu? Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, when someone utters a lot of platitudes, what it kind of conveys is the thought that they don't really know how they got to where they are, but they want to believe it was from their own genius. And, and really, just honestly, telling people things like, oh, you know, a bird in the hoof, or whatever, as if they haven't heard it, or as if they maybe somehow don't understand it quite as well as you do, well, it's really just kind of talking down to others. And, to be totally honest, although she isn't talking to me all the time, I'm starting to feel like it's a real drag just having this character in my party. I kind of wish he'd go home. I mean, is, is that really mean for me to say? I feel kind of bad about that, but... Yeah, I mean, you have to think that Celestia's probably really insecure. I bet she doesn't really have a lot of ponies that she can talk to. Oh my gosh, she turns into a star me! <laughs> well, okay, that is it. I just hate this character now. First of all, she, she's just perfect and beautiful, and she has a great flat stomach, and everybody loves her. And and then she already knows how to do magic, but she just doesn't know it yet, you know, to give Twilight like a... To be like, oh, Twilight, you could learn magic. <laughs> And then, and then she's a, and then she's a Pokemon. I, I mean, like, do you want to, do you want to achieve any of my other life dreams, Celestia? Like, do you want to be the Batman? What, what is it? I mean, I, I just feel like I work really hard, and Celestia just has these things happen to her. Like, she just gets to be a star of me. Just whatever. I'll, I'll fight this stupid octopus. He's really pretty. I mean, he's got a really doofy face, but yeah, he's got a really pretty color, so. So, everyone by now in this party, they know magic, I'm pretty sure Luna does too, but actually I don't really need to have her use any magic, because her special talents are stronger than the magic. Which is another thing that I thought was weird, was that uh, in the original game, Celestia had, well, the character that Celestia replaced would have had the tools command, but now, now Apple Bloom has that. And, and see, thing is, is that kind of, it, it changes the way that you use the characters. Uh, for one thing right now, like, Celestia's best advantage is the ability to cast magic, but that's also Twilight's best advantage. And neither of them have any good talents, but yet Luna has really good talents, and she can also cast magic. And, and for that matter, magic is really expensive in this ROM hack, so I can't really use it consistently, not like you did in the original game. But Luna can use her talent, like, all the time, and not only is it better than magic, but she can just keep reusing it. So, so not only is Luna objectively the best character that we have so far, but she could totally learn cure spells, and so no one is- no one could possibly be better than she is. And for that matter, when we start getting more characters who can also learn spells, we're gonna just phase Twilight and Celestia right out of the group, because they really have no advantage over anyone else who can learn spells. And- and as far as that Esper is concerned, getting it right off, I mean, it does kind of screw up the story. But the story is messed up in a lot of different ways now. I mean, I, I can't even just like- Okay, in the next video, before we begin, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look at some things and I'm gonna- I'm gonna kinda demonstrate how- how just like these really subtle differences have made these incredible changes to the story that you probably wouldn't even think of. Okay, looks like I won. We are victorious! How many experience points do we receive? I don't think so. Octopi hide as a defense mechanism. You know, like every other creature. What is this? It's sticky! Ah! Twy, come here. It's alright now. Stand away, citizen! We shall destroy these foul beasts thusly! No, Luna! Do not distract me, sister! She's always been very direct. Luna! Don't worry about her, Mayor. 
She's very strong, isn't she? That beast will be easy for her. Oh god, she's stuck in the dialogue box. I mean, she certainly has energy. Ha! Luna! Luna! Meet us in Nash. Because that's where we're going, right? Okay, see you later. Luna! Uh, so, yeah, yeah. A lot of things have changed, and actually, this is gonna probably take a little bit of work. I'm gonna have to spend some time. Uh, Celestia and everyone race towards Nash, but what about Luna, who is swallowed by the rogue waters? And how is Bloom faring after having penetrated the Empire's defenses in South Canterlot? Is all going according to plan? Choose a scenario. Chicken noise. Okay, so we'll wrap it up here, and then next time, I'm gonna probably have a, a kind of a retrospective look on how things were, and how things have become, thanks to the ROM hack. So, thanks for playing with me- oh, wait, 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 actually, that's right, I was gonna show you guys the things that I fought. Uh, today I fought River Wyverns, and River Squids, and River Lobsters, and that's pretty much it. It wasn't a very diverse ecosystem. Um, uh, thanks for playing with me, everybody.